Hello there guys, James here. This is my usage experience of Motorola's MIUI port for the POCO F1. This is a specific ROM which is for the Chinese version of their phones. Let me start off with why I was tempted to try out this ROM. I am always tempted to try out OEM ROM ports or you know OEM ROMs for this phone. Not just that, when I watch any Motorola phone reviews on YouTube, it's like a common theme that the reviewer always praises the UI for its closeness to stock Android, its de-bloated nature and so on. So this is my usage experience of trying it out. So let's get the basics out of the way. Banking apps do work without root and if you do root, you have to do some root hiding to get it to work. I am rooted and I am using banking apps. The next thing is that as soon as you finish setting up this ROM, you have to manually go to settings, system settings and enable Google Play services. Only then will you be able to log into your Google account and use the Google services. And you do have to install the Play Store manually in some cases. So that's the setup done. Uh, now I did have some trouble booting this ROM up for a while. Apart from that everything worked fine. That is the setup part. And once you start using this ROM, you really do notice the closeness to stock Android. One thing stands out is the notification panel. You have your uh, notifications on a separate panel and your quick settings on a different panel. It is okay but uh, Motorola does give you the option to change it to the default stock Android version, which I did. It's not that I do not like that version. It's just that the animation speed does not match up, which I'll talk about later on. Apart from that, every single thing feels close to, you know, not feels close to, feels exactly like stock Android with some additions though. It's not like pure stock Android and they have rearranged some things to, you know, make more sense. For example, they have rearranged the settings UI and laid out some settings in front rather than going to submenus, which really does make sense. I think stock Android should uh, adopt this uh, version of settings. And in the settings, you do have more options like custom gesture controls, status bar, uh, personalization and so on. Coming to personalization, you can, uh, you know, long press the home screen and go to this personalized section where there are some customization options. It's not the full-fledged customization options like you find in custom ROMs, but uh, it is enough customization for you to, you know, make your own unique look. So customization section is covered. Coming to performance, this is where I had to make a change to this ROM. It came with Genos Kernel R21 by default, but I changed it to Rockstar Kernel V17. The reason being, Genos Kernel is a little bit more permissive in terms of heating. It charges the phone really fast, but it also, you know, allows a bit more heating. I uh, changed it to Rockstar Kernel, which is a bit more restrictive in terms of heating. So this, you know, the performance of this ROM that I am stating is not exactly performance that you get in the stock version. Performance wise this ROM is fine with Rockstar kernel, you know apps do not launch as fast as Genos kernel but battery life is consistent. I wouldn't say this is the best uh, battery life coming to gaming performance. With Genos kernel performance would have been really nice. Gaming performance is okay, it's not completely lag free but it's very much playable. And battery life while gaming was also not bad. I was playing a game with, uh, I started at 80% and after more than one and a half hours of gaming it went to 20% and I was playing at smooth extreme you know 60 fps settings. So it's acceptable. Coming to the normal experience of this ROM, the one thing that you'll notice is the increased app animation speeds, the app launches and even the animation speeds in general have been boosted slightly. So that might not sound like much but in the long run you do feel the difference. So that is what gave me the original Oxygen OS vibes the small amount of customization that matters, the animation speed increase where it matters and all that. Coming to animation speed, the reason I changed to the stock Android notification panel is that while the MIUI or the iOS inspired notification panel was good, the animation speed did not match up with the uh, boosted animation speeds throughout the UI. Here the animation feels perfectly fine and it even has that uh, pixel dual tone finish which I really like. And a weird issue is that when I switched from that uh, control center style of interface to the stock Android version, I lost the auto brightness toggle. I would like to add one more point to this review and that is a question to myself, what did I miss coming back from Android 13? And I would say that the only one thing that I missed was opt-in for notifications in Android 13. So whatever app you installed in Android 13, it has to ask you whether it can send you notifications. <coughs> You can flat out deny that and apps cannot send you just randomly, you know, spam you with notifications. Talking about notifications, one more thing that I faced, uh, it was a problem with this ROM is Telegram notifications getting delayed. I was getting WhatsApp notifications perfectly fine, but Telegram notifications kept getting delayed constantly and sometimes it wouldn't come at all. I would have to manually open the app to, you know, get notifications from it. 
I heard the same problem in a uh, very recent review of a Motorola phone that I watched. So yeah, that is what you can expect when you are trying out this ROM for the Poco F1. Overall, it is a great ROM. It's a very good all-rounder ROM in general. It was very stable when I tried it out. I did not have any app crashes or uh, random reboots or anything like that. And I did enjoy the experience. I enjoyed the oxygen or vibe that I got out of it. And I like the fact that I was getting that vibe with the modern version of Android, Android 12 that is. I really like the OEM features like the game mode, the subtle customization. So overall, yeah, I would recommend you guys to try out this ROM. So that has been it for my usage experience of this ROM. I hope you found this helpful and if you have any questions or queries, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and see you guys in the next one.